Hi, friends. Logan Clements here, one of your co-hosts with the Better Events podcast. And in this week's episode, you're going to hear from my co-host, Mary Davidson, talking all about one of her favorite topics, and that's fundraising events, but more specifically talking about the purpose behind fundraising events. The episode is full of intention and thinking through how you can make the most of your events and setting goals that will set you up for success in the long run. If you're a nonprofit leader, an event professional, or just someone who wants a better understanding of what fundraising events even are, then this episode's for you. And before we jump into it, I do want to remind you, if you're enjoying what you're hearing at all, please consider sharing this episode or this podcast with a friend, family member, or colleague who you think might benefit from it, and or consider leaving us a review wherever you listen to podcasts, even taking the one, two minutes to leave us a rating will just help us grow this community and we can all continue to learn from each other. Without further ado, let's get into the episode. Welcome to the Better Events Podcast. Join two event strategists, Logan Clements and Mary Davidson, who believe we can all create, host, and attend better events. In this podcast, you will learn about event strategy and actions that you can use today as an event host, planner, or manager. Hear directly from the people who are creating innovative and inspiring events today and tomorrow and grow your business along the way. Now, let's get started and thanks for listening to the Better Events Podcast. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Better Events Podcast. This is Mary Davidson, one of your co-hosts, and I am thrilled to be with you today. It is just me today. We are doing a solo episode, and we are sending Logan well wishes and all the wonderful projects that she is currently working on this month. So today, because it's just me, I thought it would be a great opportunity to chat about one of my favorite things, which is fundraising events. So today we're chatting about the purpose behind fundraising events. And one of our top listened episodes is clear back to episode four and episode two. Episode four is all about fundraising event strategies for nonprofits. And episode two is all about finding your why and your North Star for an event. Now we talk about that North Star episode a lot throughout this podcast, and it's because it's so important. But for today's episode, I'm hoping that this conversation will kind of supplement those and provide more details about one of the most important steps to planning your fundraising event, which is identifying the purpose. So as you may know from listening to other episodes here, I specialize in fundraising events because I was involved in the fundraising world before I got into events. And I was doing things like donor development, volunteer management, and just a lot of straight up fundraising. And so that was kind of an experience I had both in the corporate nonprofit world as well as very local nonprofit organizations. And I have, you know, admitted in the past that I used to have kind of a beef with fundraising events because I wondered if they were truly worth it. They took so much work from me and from other staff, from board members, from community partners, and many of whom offered their time and support for free because it's a fundraising event and that's what a lot of people do. So the level of exhaustion that I have felt after some of these events is just unreal. It's on another level. Um, but here's the thing. I I love it. And I'm a super nerd about fundraising events despite it all. I love fundraising events and I hope that I can instill just a little bit of that love into you today as well too. So we're going to start from the very beginning because it's a very good place to start, right? And we're talking about the purpose of fundraising events. So let's identify what purpose even is. So here's an example. The name of my business is EP Events, Events with a Purpose. And I did that on purpose um, because I believe that all events should have a purpose and especially fundraising events, which is what we're talking about today. And that could even possibly be more than one purpose sometimes. Okay, so here are some questions that you can ask yourself to start identifying that purpose. So why are you doing this event? Why, what does success look like for you? What are you hoping to get out of the event? What are your donors and supporters hoping to get out of the event? What about your sponsors and partners? What are they hoping to get out of the event? Common purposes for fundraising events can be things like the big one to raise funds for your organization. And this might be obviously the biggest one. 
And perhaps another purpose could be to have your supporters re-engage with your organization and reignite that spark. It could be to educate the community about the work and mission of your organization. And here's kind of an example. So there was a local organization that um, supported children and local efforts in the community that had uh, virtual fundraisers during the pandemic. And they decided this year that it was time for them to do a return to an in-person event. They brought me in to support these efforts. And during this time, there was some organizational change because they had recently closed down a program that was really well known in the community. And there was reasons for closing down this program. It didn't make sense to continue it. We're we're trying to plan this event and I'm trying to help them with this. And we're working on audience development. And so one thing that we did is we sent out a survey to potential attendees with some general questions about the event to learn their general availability and just preference on location, time of day, and just some event feedback. And as I'm sure we know, and I've brought this up before, donors and supporters really love to share their opinion. And so this uh, through this survey, we learned that people were actually unhappy with the organization because they got rid of this program that I mentioned before. So long story short, uh, we're in this process now. Uh, leadership decided to that it was best to not hold a traditional fundraiser, that it wasn't the right time to be asking for money. Instead, they wanted to make it a friendraiser and make it more of an educational event to rebuild community support and just faith in the organization and to highlight the good work and the stories that they're doing day to day. And so as you can see throughout this process, this was just at the beginning of the process, but the purpose of the event changed. And it was a pretty big change from going from an event that was going to have a lot of traditional fundraising activities to one that was not even going to have an ask at all. And so that kind of shifted things quite a bit. But I think that's this kind of helps identify how purposes can change. They can be different. um, But that it's so important that this is a conversation that takes place. And especially near the beginning, if you can, Because through this conversation, we were able to identify the fact that this could have gone pretty wrong if and and we could be very insensitive if we didn't go about this in a different way. And so that changed the purpose of our event. And therefore, it's going to change the actions and how we're going to start implementing and making sure that all truly does make sense. So you really need to nail down your purpose when you start planning the planning process for your fundraising events and why you're doing the event. And just make sure that everyone who is involved internally in this process is on board with this because they are the ones in reality that are going to be making it happen. (laughs) And so that might take more than one meeting. It might not take, um, like if you don't have a very cohesive group, maybe it might take quite a bit of time to get everybody on board, but it's important to take that time. And so like when I've gotten involved with events, sometimes it'll take even around two to three meetings with the group to really hear everyone's thoughts and how this is actually going to happen, how we're going to make the event accomplish what they want. And sometimes it's, you know, it takes that amount of time for an event that perhaps is non-traditional and takes some more, you know, convincing or time to get everybody on the same page. But it's an important conversation to have and to invite people to that conversation that are, like I said, are going to have to enact that event. And so once again, these purposes can change. And I think that's one of the main points that I wanted to kind of point out in this episode. But let's talk about a scenario where if you're doing an event that you've done for years and years and years and your community knows it and they love it and your organization does as well. So does your purpose for this type of event change each year? Do you really need to reflect each year on this event, the purpose? And I'm not sure if this is an unpopular opinion or not, but I would say absolutely 100%. You need to think about this every year. And this is something that I feel pretty passionately about because it brings me back to my earlier gripe that I had at the beginning about how much of a load that these events can be sometimes. So with all the work that you put in, you really better be looking at it to see if it's worth it each year and to see that it's aligning still with your purpose each year because things really do change and the world changes. And we saw that a lot during the pandemic. And I still think that's the case. So every year it does, I think it would be great due diligence to give it a little bit of reflection. So here is an example, another example. I'm hoping to give you all some like tangible examples today. So as you're thinking about this, you can think through 
if you're involved in fundraising events and the organizations and just kind of put it in that scenario. And hopefully these examples will help you with that. So when, before I started my own business, I was employed full time doing fundraising events and uh, something I like to share the story that the organization kind of uh, did to change their fundraising direction because I think it aligns perfectly when describing the purpose of an event. So they were known for doing this big community event that had a lot of people attend and the event had a lot of um, brand credibility. The name was well known. And so when I came onto the organization, I was kind of brought on because they actually decided to change their whole event plan. Instead of doing this one big one that was well known, they started doing four small ones. And um, so I can't really speak to, you know, the success or not of the previous event. Uh, but the reason that they changed is because that event was taking so much work, time, effort, resources. And a lot of people came not understanding, I think, fully the, the, the mission of the organization. But they came because it was well known and they wanted to have a good time. And the expenses that it took to pull off the, that event were pretty enormous. And so they ended up not having a great return on investment, which is really a problem for fundraising events when the purpose is to raise funds. And so after I think a few years of kind of seeing this go down, they decided to um, do these four smaller fundraising events. And that's what I helped them implement. And so that was interesting because those each of those events had a different purpose and a different audience. And I thought that was a really interesting angle. And it was great to be a part of something like that because one event like was your traditional gala type experience because there are still people who like that. There's a certain audience who likes that tradition. Then another event was more of a party that invited the community and had education and small fundraising opportunities. But the goal of that event was a fundraiser like we've talked about. So that one was one of my favorites. And then there um, was another one which was really focused on the business community and was that luncheon type format. And then we did uh, an online one at the end of the year, which, you know, as we learned for the pandemic, this was pre-pandemic, but the pandemic online reaches a whole nother audience. So it was great to be able to reach these separate audiences through these different efforts. Now, it was a lot of effort because you're doing four events, <laughs> but they had greater returns than they did. But the one giant one that was really well known, and that's a hard decision to make for sure. And if you're kind of in that scenario, I think it's just important to go back to that purpose every year and really reflect like we've talked about to make sure that it is worth it. So our next question for reflection today is when do we need to identify this purpose that we're talking about in an event? I would say immediately in the planning process, like as soon as you possibly can. And sometimes I'm brought into events further along in the process when organizations have already made their goals and made plans for the event. But the scenario when I'm able to help guide that um, is really the best and most helpful, I think, for everybody involved. And so I kind of focus on three things right away, which is the purpose of the event, sponsorship, venue search or platform selection if it's virtual, and then getting out of save the date once that setup is, is determined. And so you'll notice that I said purpose first. That is the first thing that I want to help an organization do is figure out the purpose of their event. When you are doing that process, like I said, it's important to involve multiple people. So here are some ways that you can do that. You could do like an audience poll or survey if you want to kind of get the larger community's thoughts. You could involve leadership and decision makers. And of course, you probably should. <laughs> um, you could involve um, those that are going to enact the purpose, like the staff and the board, and have that conversation and put that in place. So that's kind of the steps on who you invite and what that looks like. And then how do you let the purpose impact the actual planning process once that's determined? One thing that I think is a kind of a good practice is to write that purpose at the top of your agendas. And so when you have your meetings, you're kind of reflecting back on that each time. And then also briefly mention it in every meeting um, in those meetings that we're talking about so that it's, it might seem a little bit redundant, but the fact is if you don't mention it, at least it's there and people can just look at it. And it's a good reminder on saying, okay, so the purpose of this event is to raise funds and build community support. That's it. So people can see it. And this should literally impact everything that you do. 
And like I was kind of saying, I don't mean that you have to be like annoying about it and talk about it all the time, but because you put the work into really nailing the purpose at the beginning and um, then it's going to just impact many aspects of your planning process, which is good. And that's what we want to become the norm. And so just don't be afraid to bring it up also with the understanding that it's great if it's just an overall goal that everybody understands and then it's always lingering in the background, which is great. So how do you let the purpose impact the day of the event? Honestly, like there have been scenarios when I've gotten a sense from talking to people or from survey results or stories, just any of those things or lack of um, engagement with the organization post event that it just seems like some people come to an event and they leave not further understanding anything about the organization. And to me, that Mm. is a problem. (laughs) If somebody comes to your event, you want to give them every opportunity to engage and engage in a way that works for them by providing different scenarios, activities, giving opportunities. And so it's such a letdown when someone doesn't understand why they are there for an event. And this can be challenging. I mentioned one of the events, um, earlier that was more of a party fundraiser and that, you know, we really thought through like, how can we educate people while they're here? Because we don't want it to be like mixed, mixed signals and everything. So part of it is like the communication. So before people even come, they understand that it's a fundraiser, but they're, they're anything that they give or their involvement at all in the event is going towards and the efforts that it's helping. So <laughs> that's just one thing. Um, that's important in making sure that during the day of your event, that purpose is going to impact, continue to impact the day of. It doesn't just end during the planning process. And then there are opportunities, um, like I was kind of saying, to interact with your organization, whether it's a gala, a luncheon, a walk, a run, just make sure that there is a presence at the event by having staff there and people there that are focused on donor development. And that's why sometimes it's great to bring in an event professional if you don't have somebody like that on your team so that you and your team can focus in on that donor development and be that presence in the room talking to the people and sharing stories about your organization so that they don't leave without that interaction (laughs) and they'll for sure learn more. And then another way, another thing that you can do is to have info booths or community resource booths to learn about your organization. And that depends the format of your event, right? Maybe if it's a little more laid back, you could have these that just kind of invites people to choose their own adventure and um, learn more about your organization and, and during at these resource booths. Um, especially if education is one of your purposes, then that would really help with that. And we mentioned that uh, one of the most common purposes of fundraising events is to raise money for your cause. So what if at the end of the event, it, it didn't do that? What if it was a failure in that sense? Uh, Well, I kind of want to take you on a reflection and look at what happened along the way during that potential event. So let's say that your event had a purpose of raising funds and educating your community. Along the way, did you raise any money in sponsorship? Well, that's a win because you probably did. (laughs) It's even an extra win if you can cultivate that sponsorship and then turn it into a partnership to set you up for the future events that you do. And did you involve new vendor partners that are going to hopefully remember your mission? You really never know the impact that your example and leadership can make. I know when I work with organizations, I remember them. I learn more about them than I ever thought I would. And it comes up in day-to-day conversations sometimes. Did you give volunteers an opportunity to engage with your organization further? So these are all just reflection questions to think about if the event truly was a failure, if you didn't quite meet your purpose. Did you have a program that represented the voices and stories that you aim to represent? Did you provide opportunities for the community to be involved and be present? Did someone that hasn't engaged with your organization attend the event, even if they didn't donate at the event? Or did a donor give more than they ever have before? And why do you think that was? So these are just some reflection questions because those items still could have happened, but you didn't raise the amount of money that you wanted to raise. So my question back to you is, do you think that that event was a failure because you didn't really fulfill your purpose in this scenario, which was to raise funds and build community support? I would say that there was still levels of success. Absolutely. 
And so these are all metrics for success, all these things I just mentioned. So if your event doesn't fulfill your purpose and the sense of raising funds, it still accomplished other things. But then that raised, that brings a question that you need to ask yourself of, was it worth it? And what do you think that you need to do differently next year? Or is it going to take time to get your audience used to this event? And you're going to call, you know, this one a f- friend raiser instead, but you've learned so much and you're going to cultivate these relationships so that next year it is a fundraiser. So I hope you see that purpose really impacts your event planning actions. And that's really the point. And that's why it's so important to identify your purpose for fundraising events or any event, of course, for that matter. So put on your event planning timeline or checklist, put at the top. If you're an independent planner and get brought in late in the game, ask the client um, questions so that you can better perform and aid them in that or put them in the uh, put yourself in the position to help them identify that purpose for future events. So we've talked all about purpose today. Thank you so much for listening. Hopefully this is help, helpful for you and you can kind of look back on it as you reflect as you continue to plan your fundraising events and really nail down that purpose at the beginning of your planning process. So thank you so much for listening to another episode of the Better Events Podcast. Please join us again next Wednesday. You can email us if you have any questions at bettereventspod at gmail.com. Follow us on all major social platforms at Better Events Pod. And thank you so much again. And we will see you again next week. 